Thank you, everybody. Uh, we are running out of time. Uh, thank you very much for this vibrant uh, open discussion. Uh, we can see some comments in the chat box if someone wants to respond to that or not only the panelists, but, but also the participants, please feel free to get involved into it. Uh, so I thank the organizer for this fantastic, uh, giving me this fantastic opportunity to chair uh, this moderate this session. So my last task, uh, not only to thank you all, the three presenters, fantastic presenters and uh, the participants who asked the question or commented in the chat box, but also to introduce the next session's uh, moderators. There are two moderators in the next session. Uh, let me quickly introduce them. Uh, first, Dr. Uh, Tikran uh, Torosev. He has been publishing since 2004, primarily working in large pharma and biotech companies. Uh, Dr. Torosev uh, has an extensive background in publish publication planning as well as medical writing. He is also active in professional organizations uh, like uh, our society, as well as ISMPP and uh, AMWA, and is an author on guideline for the publication professionals, including a joint position statement uh, on uh, GPP 2022. Uh, Dikran, he is also one of the founder faculty for the UC San Diego Medical Writing Certificate. He is based in Boston, USA. You will be hearing from him later on. And the other uh, moderator who, is, uh, who has been the panelist of this session, uh, Dr. Sam Matthew, you have already know his details, but very quickly who joined later, I'm just quickly mentioning, Dr. Matthew is Senior Director of Medical Affairs at Cactus Life Sciences based in India. He has fantastic and vast experience, uh, especially his career over the last two decades. Uh, he has played roles as scientist, author, peer reviewer, scientific writer, journal editor, and also business uh, uh, leader. He has worked with uh, different pharmaceuticals companies like Beacon and Novartis, as well as Pfizer and others. And he has published uh, 65 uh, research articles, and he has been involved with uh, many other writing and editing uh, assignments, uh, including peer review. For, for more than 4,000 research papers, which is a fantastic achievement indeed. So it is all from me. I hand over to the organizer. Mariam, please uh, take it over. And thank you very much. Uh, see you uh, a couple of hours later because I will be uh, on the panel. So see you there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Right. Hi, Sam. Uh, do we jump in here? Um, how do we handle this? Um, I can introduce the next speaker if it's helpful, and then we can take turns. Yeah, so what I suggest to you is you go with the first two, and then I will right. start from the, do the last two, including your introduction. Yeah. I will do that. Thanks. Thanks so much, Sam. I appreciate it. Um, okay, so the next um, learned speaker is Gunjan Kashu. Uh, he, she is uh, the co-founder and chief COO, uh, Chief Operating Officer of Accuracy, uh, which is a leader in providing language solutions to researchers and organizations globally. Gunjan has been associated with the publication field for more than a decade, working with authors, scientists, and researchers from across the globe and across all domains, from engineering to medicine medicine and social sciences. Through the academic editing wing of Accuracy, she aims to help scientific research gain visibility by getting published in authentic academic journals, as well as universities and research institutes to improve their reputation and ranking. And we all want to do that. Uh, Accuracy end-to-end -end solutions helps address each stage of publication process from editing the first draft to addressing peer review comments from the journal. Uh, so uh, with that introduction, I'd like to ask uh, Gunjan to, uh, to jump into her presentation.
Hi, hi. Sorry for the mute. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. I will just quickly. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes. Okay, let's go. Okay, so uh, hello everyone. Thank you, Dickton, for this uh, beautiful introduction. Uh, my name is Gunjan Khashu, and I am the CEO and co-founder of Accuracy. We are based out of Dubai. Personally speaking, I have around 15 years of experience in the academic editing and publishing field, having been an editor, a trainer, a reviewer, and handling many such roles. I started Accuracy because of my passion for helping improve the quality of the written content, especially for our brilliant authors and researchers here who, for whom English might not be their first language or preferred language of communication. Accuracy primarily helps universities and research organizations to uh, improve their reputation and ranking by increasing the chances of research articles being published in international ISC, ISI indexed uh, journals. Now, depending on the level of intervention required, we offer various levels of uh, various editing services. Uh, so proofreading being our basic service where we do a normal, uh, a basic level of edit to premium editing, which is our uh, top of the range service, which uh, includes an edit of the, a comprehensive edit of language, grammar, uh, flow, organization, structure, etc. Now, we also, offer a range of author support services like plagiarism check, journal recommendation, cover letter writing, and all that. So uh, in addition to editing, we also provide the uh, localization services. We, Since we are based in UAE, we have started with uh, transla uh, uh, translating Arabic to English and English to Arabic, but we are also planning to uh, venture out into other languages like Japanese and Chinese. Now, uh, to give you a brief, we are also, we also have a wing called instructional design where we curate all kinds of content for educational and corporate fields. Now, recently we realized that there are a lot of authors who uh, struggle with writing academic papers, forget about sending them for editing. So we started the service called developmental editing, where of course the author provides us the rough draft and we uh, rough draft of the manuscript and the statistical data, and we rewrite the paper for them, making sure that the paper is 100% original. Now, through this uh, through this process, we also uh, realized, we also understood that, uh, we also understood the value of educating the authors on academic writing. So what we did was we uh, collaborated with a lot of universities here to hold uh, author training workshops where we train the uh, researchers, professors on academic writing. Now, since we have a whole set of content writers and instructional designers with us, we also prepare instructional manuals, uh, training manuals, guidelines for these researchers and the students in terms of academic writing. Now, we are proud to have a team of well-certified editors who are subject matter experts and uh, with high uh, numerous years of experience in their field. So this was uh, a short introduction of accuracy. Now, my topic today is the human, it's a very basic topic, everybody's talking about it. The human touch in publishing, why language editors are vital for error-free, well-crafted research papers. So, uh, yeah. So why, why select this topic? Now in today's world, being in this industry is a very tricky business that I have realized uh, moving, shifting my roles from being on the other side of the table and being an entrepreneur now. Now, especially because we human editors are constantly pitched against uh, AI assisted tools, which are churning out machine edited text by the minute. To begin with, there is no doubt that AI has done significant advancement in various aspects of academic publishing. Now, especially in term, uh, in cases where the authors have to churn out, you know, huge volumes of data in limited time. 
In fact, at Accuracy, we have a completely independent wing in partnership with Google Cloud dedicated to building a robust technological model which will ease the entire publication cycle for both authors and the editors. What I do not agree, however, is that AI can completely take over human editors today or ever in the future. The human touch will always be an upper hand and the primary source of having publication ready documents. So without further ado, I would like to share my two cents on the importance of human touch in publishing. The first point, human intervention is creative intervention. I guess what I want to highlight here is that God created man and humans created AI. How man can never replace God similarly, same is true with human AI intervention relationship. When a human editor looks at a research paper, some of the things that we can very uh, we can be always confident of is it will be a unique approach, a creative outlook that is person specific, and an eye for detail that has been honed through years of experience in the field. This I can say confidently is not true for a machine learning algorithm, which takes its cues from realms and realms of data for injected into them. Now, moving on to the second point, an editor plays multiple roles, one of which is of a fact checker. I know that AI is increasingly becoming smart enough to generate written content, correct grammar, punctuation errors, and provide suggestions. However, relying entirely on an AI tool to get your manuscript editing is not foolproof. Although AI-assisted tools can help cut down human intervention considerably for relatively mundane tasks, human editors possess a deep understanding of the subject matter, the nuances, and the context of the research being published. In short, an AI tool might be an action tool where it can complete an action by following a command, but thinking of it as a, but, but expecting it to be a thinking tool where it can assess the entire content still requires human intervention. Moving to the next point, an editor can help maintain the academic voice of the author. Now, we all know that every research paper is different. That is because every author has a unique academic voice. If all papers are edited using the same set of data points in case of AI, chances are that the originality of the academic voice is lost or diluted and all papers will start resembling in terms of their written style and presentation. With a human editor, you seldom run this risk. Levels of editing and how humans do it best. I strongly believe, given my years of experience in this field, that a human editor is far capable of accurately and edit uh, adequately editing any written content at various levels of depth. Now, in the industry, we term these, uh, ter we term these concepts as proofreading, copy editing, uh, premium editing, or substantive editing. So even if an, an AI tool is built that can do this, or if an AI tool like this exists, it will struggle with editing complex ideas and text. So the next point is AI tools and unreliability of data patterns and the loophole of socially structured bias. Now, editorial decisions often involve subjective judgment, especially when it comes to complex academic topics. Human editors can apply their extensive uh, expertise to make nuanced decisions and uh, decisions about the manuscript quality, its relevance and suitability for a particular journal or audience. In contrast, AI lacks the ability to make value-based judgments. So for example, at Accuracy, with our premium editing service, as I mentioned uh, in, in the introduction, any researcher can rest assured that the document will be structured in a logical flow, is extremely readable and easy to understand, both pitch perfect grammar, punctuation, and spelling accuracy, and is published and it's publication ready. As the a very important point, as the author, you have the choice of communicating with your editor at any point in time. Now, human editors can provide a personalized and constructive feedback to authors. Now, this can be done by AI as well, but here this feedback goes beyond grammar and syntax and you know uh, the structure of the document. It is more related to the academic tone, the argumentation and presentation. Now, this is not possible with the machine. The human touch helps researchers 
get the peace of mind that their paper is being edited by a real living thinking person. Now the next point, AI tools and unreliability of data patterns and the loophole of socially structured bias. From what I've read, heard and understood, similar to humans, AI systems can also have inherent biases. These are of course due to the knowledge and information that humans have input into them over the years. Therefore their output is molded by the data they are trained on. Academic writing often involves adherence to specific cultural and linguistic norms. Human editors are better equipped to understand and respect these nuances, ensuring that the author's intent is preserved while adhering to academic standards. And the, I think that is uh, what every author here wants. Whenever you give your paper for editing, the first thing that the author tells us is, please do not mess with my intended meaning. My intending me intended meaning should stay and it should reflect what I want to convey. Also, academic publishing keeps on evolving with time, uh, with, with new trends and expectations emerging. Human editors are more adaptable to these changes, and you know they can incorporate them in their work very efficiently. Whereas AI will do that, but it will take a long time before it can catch up. The last point, data security potentially at risk. I think we'll agree, we'll all agree here that cybersecurity threats are a real issue today. A potential threat that I foresee using online tools is data leakage. Although AI tools promise a lot, there are a lot of AI tools that promise data security, this is still a threat. Now I agree that this can also be the case in human intervention, but uh, we all know that human accountability is more manageable than machine accountability. So I would like to close my presentation with, uh, with reiterating my point on how the human touch is vital for any research author to maintain their academic voice and original thought and writing style. Finally, having said all that, I feel that there's, there should be a balance between uh, AI and human intervention so that the strengths of both these can be uh, combined which can lead to more, uh, you know, higher quality academic publishing processes. Thank you so much. Yeah, that would be all from my end. Great. Thank you so much for that uh, wonderful presentation, uh, Dr. Cashew. Uh, much appreciate that. Um, so we're actually uh, tracking quite well in regards